Jerry West and Oscar Robertson. Despite playing more than 50 years ago, these two legends are still highly respected and loved by basketball fans. On the all-time rankings list, West and Robertson are often ranked very close together. So my question is, who really was the greater player? Before I start, let me get a few things out of the way. I like to look at things objectively. It's the reason I don't make many ranking videos now. Because of how opinionated the basketball community is, the minute you say something bad about someone's favorite player, you tend to get some pretty big backlash. I am not trying to change anybody's mind with this video. I just want to look at both players' careers and examine their advantages and weaknesses. By the end, I'll present my conclusion on who I believe the greater player was, but it's just my opinion, and I don't think I'm more right than anybody else. First off, let's look at their player profiles and individual awards. Oscar Robertson was 6 foot 5 and spent his entire career playing as a point guard. He played with the Cincinnati Royals for 10 seasons and then with the Milwaukee Bucks for 4 seasons. The Big O was the 1964 MVP, a 12-time All-Star, he made 11 All-NBA teams, he was the 1961 Rookie of the Year, a 3-time All-Star Game MVP, and won a championship in 1971. Jerry West was listed at 6 foot 2, but he was really closer to 6 4 or 5. He spent 12 seasons playing as a point guard and 2 seasons as a shooting guard. He spent his entire career with the Los Angeles Lakers and was a 14-time All-Star. He made 12 All-NBA teams. He was the 1969 Finals MVP, the 1972 All-Star Game MVP, and he won a championship in 1972. Jerry is one of only a few players to be named an All-Star every single year of his career. He never won a regular season MVP, but he finished as the runner-up in 66, 70, 71, and 70 now that we know some of their career accolades, let's compare the two in five major categories. Round one is scoring. Oscar Robertson scored 26,710 career points, which currently puts him in 13th place on the all-time scoring list. He had a career average of 25.7 points per game. He won the 1968 scoring title with 29.2 points per game, but his best scoring season was 31.4 points per game in 64. Oscar had six seasons where he averaged 30 points or more, and one of these was his rookie season. His career high in a game was 56. The Big O was a very good free throw shooter, leading the league in percentage twice with 85.3% and 64 and 87.3% and 68. He finished with a career free throw percentage of 83.8% and had a career field goal percentage of 48.5%. From the mid-range, Robertson was great and he was good at playing with his back to the basket. He also had a nice combination of speed and strength that allowed him to get to the rim a lot. And if he wasn't shooting the ball, he was good at grabbing offensive of rebounds and scoring on second chance opportunities. Jerry West scored 25,192 career points, which currently puts him in 23rd place on the all-time scoring list. He had a career average of 27 points per game. He won the 1970 scoring title with 31.2 points per game, but his best scoring season was 31.3 points per game in 66. Jerry had four seasons where he averaged 30 points or more, and his career high in a game was 63, which was the record for the most points scored by a guard until it was broken by Pete Maravich, then Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant. West had a career field goal percentage of 47.4% and a career free throw percentage of 81.4%. In an era where a jump shot was worth the same as a layup, West constantly settled for the harder shots. He was great at hitting contested pull-up jumpers in the face of defenders and could be pretty tricky with his pump fakes. If the three-point line had been available to him, he would have had even higher scoring numbers. West was also a great ball handler. He could pull off proto-reverse layups and he also developed a turnaround jumper. Robertson has the edge in total points, but that's likely due to his availability, Robertson played in 1,042 games, while Jerry played in 932 games. West was better at scoring in hot streaks. He may have less 30 points per game seasons than Oscar, but Jerry only had one season where he averaged less than 20 points per game, while Oscar had four seasons. Even if he had slightly worse efficiency, for me, I'm gonna have to go with Zeke from Cabin Creek on this one. The winner of round one is Jerry West. Round two is playmaking. It's worth noting that back in the 60s, assists were not tracked the way that they are now. Back then, if you passed your teammate the ball, they had to immediately shoot it for you to earn an assist. If they took a dribble and then shot, then you would not get an assist. Oscar Robertson had 9,887 career assists, which currently puts him in eighth place on the all-time list. He had a career average of 9.5 assists per game, and he led the league in assists for six years. The only other players with more assist titles than him are John Stockton and Bob 
Bob Cousy, Robertson's highest average in a season was 11.5 per game in 1965. He had four seasons where he averaged 11 assists or more, one where he had 10.7, and four seasons with nine or more. Jerry West had 6,238 career assists, which currently puts him in 34th place on the all-time list. He had a career average of 6.7 assists per game, and won the 1972 assist title with 9.7 per game. His other highest assist seasons were 9.5 per game in 1971 and 8.8 .8 per game in 73. These two were elite dual threat guards, but whether you look at longevity or peak performance, the Big O holds the edge. Something worth mentioning is how Robertson racked up a ton of assists without many all-star teammates. The best teammates Oscar had on the Royals were Hall of Famers Jerry Lucas, Wayne Embry, and an old Jack Twyman. On the Bucks, he had better help with great scores Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bob Dandridge, but Robertson averaged less assists with them than he did with the Royals. Now compare that to Jerry West, who had help his whole career from Hall of Famers Elgin Baylor, Gail Goodrich, Wilt Chamberlain, albeit a less offensively dominant Wilt, and all-stars like Rudy LaRusso, Archie Clark, Hot Rod Hunley, and Frank Selvey. From watching old games, I also get the sense that West prioritized scoring more than Robertson. This would also make sense as to why he alternated between point and shooting guard. I wouldn't call Jerry selfish. He was definitely a great playmaker, but I still think Robertson takes this category. The winner of round two is Oscar Robertson. Round three is defense. This round was probably the easiest to decide yet, since Jerry West is widely considered to be the better defensive player. West had a reputation for being one of, if not the greatest pickpocket of his era. Unfortunately, steals and blocks were not tracked until the final season of his career, but if they had been tracked earlier, Jerry possibly could have racked up a few steal titles. Jerry had around a 6'9 wingspan, which also made him good at blocking shots. There's a famous story about a time he scored 44 points, had 12 rebounds, 12 assists, and 10 unofficially tracked blocks. But when he was interviewed after, he said, defensively, from a team standpoint, I didn't feel I played very well. It shows you just how competitive he really was. West made five all-defense teams, and four of those were first-team selections. But all-defense honors didn't exist until the 68-69 season, when Jerry had just turned 30. So a 31, 32, 33, and 34-year-old West still stood out as the best defensive point guard in the league. I wouldn't call Oscar Robertson a bad defender, as his size and speed helped him stay in front of his man. If you're big on rebounding as a defensive attribute, then you could say this category is a lot closer, but I still think the logo comfortably takes it. The winner of round three is Jerry West. In round four, we're going to examine both stars' peak years. Oscar Robertson is famously remembered as the player who revolutionized the triple-double. His most famous career moment was putting up 30.8 points, 12.5 rebounds, and 11.4 assists in 1962, becoming the first player to officially average a triple-double for an entire season. But what's even crazier is that in his prime years from 1961 to 66, he put up 30.4 points, 10 rebounds, and 10.7 assists on 48.4% from the field. That's six straight seasons where he averaged a 30-point triple-double. Oscar grabbed 7,804 career rebounds for an average of 7.5 rebounds per game. The Big O has the most rebounds in a season by a guard. When he grabbed 985 rebounds in 1962, he also has the third most in a season with 835 in 1963 and the sixth most with 783 in 1964. He was one decimal point away from averaging another triple-double in his 1964 season with 31.4 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds, and 11 assists. Robertson also led the league in points per game and assists per game in 1968 with 29.2 points and 9.7 assists. But this season is often ignored in favor of Tiny Archibald's 1973 season where he led the league in total points and total assists. Jerry West's prime years were from 1962 to 1972, and he averaged 28.7 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 6.8 assists on 47.9% from the field. You could make the argument for Jerry because he had a longer peak, but Robertson's statistical production is just too good to ignore. The winner of round four is Oscar Robertson. 
For the fifth and final round, we'll look at both players' success in the playoffs. Oscar Robertson made the playoffs 10 times in his career and played in 86 postseason games. He made the finals twice, won a championship in 1971, and had career playoff averages of 22.2 points, 8.9 assists, and 6.7 boards on 46% from the field. He won eight playoff series and was eliminated in the first round five times. Jerry West made the playoffs every year of his career, though he did miss the 19th 1971 playoffs and only played one game of the 1967 and 74 playoffs due to injury. He played in 153 postseason games. He made the finals nine times, won a championship in 1972, and had career playoff averages of 29.1 points, 6.3 assists, and 5.6 rebounds on 46.9% from the field. While Oscar's scoring average dipped in the playoffs, Jerry's increased. One of the first things people notice when looking at Jerry West's resume is his 1-8 record in the NBA Finals, but to label Jerry West a loser just on that is a take that's severely lacking context. Jerry West had to face a super team in all nine of his finals appearances, the first six to the Bill Russell Celtics, and then the last three to the Knicks. Jerry lost to teams with five Hall of Famers in the starting lineup. He took the Celtics to three game sevens and lost all of them by a combined seven points. He lost the 1970 Finals in seven games as well. Well, one of Jerry West's nicknames is Mr. Clutch. If the MVP award factored in both the regular season and the postseason, there's no doubt in my mind West would have a couple MVP trophies. In the 1965 West Finals versus the Baltimore Bullets, Jerry averaged 46.3 points in six games. No player has ever averaged more points in a playoff series than Jerry West did against the Bullets. Not Kareem, not Wilt Chamberlain, not LeBron James, not even Michael Jordan. Jordan. Jerry led the playoffs in scoring a total of five times, the last of which was in 1973. He famously won the NBA's first ever finals MVP in 1969. Even though the Lakers lost the series, he has tons of other clutch playoff moments, like when he hit a 60-foot buzzer beater in game three of the 1970 finals, the deepest shot ever made in a finals game. Or how about in game three of the 1962 finals, when Jerry stole the ball on an inbound pass and made a game-winning layup. Up. In the playoffs, Oscar Robertson had 25 20 point games, 19 30 point games, and 4 40 point games. Jerry had 55 20 point games, 54 30 point games, 18 40 point games, and 2 50 point games. The winner of round 5 is Jerry West, which means, in my humble opinion, Jerry West was the greater player. One more interesting stat to bring up is that only 7 players in NBA history have won a scoring title and an assist title. Of those seven, LeBron James, Wilt Chamberlain, and Jerry West are the only ones who were also selected to an all-defensive first team. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. If you think Oscar was better, I have no problem with that. Jerry West himself has said multiple times that he thinks Oscar Robertson was better than he was. I just wanted to take an objective look and see which legend holds the edge in certain aspects of the game. I also previously mentioned how Jerry West had much more help throughout his career. For his first few years with the Lakers, Elgin Baylor was the team's go-to guy, until he got injured in 1965. Jerry also didn't have to spend most of his career in the same conference as the Celtics and Wilt Chamberlain. If you think I missed anything, please let me know in the comments, and thank you for listening to my little analysis.